notices and posts from uh, I know people in the media received information from the public relations specialist here so I appreciate and thank the Primate Center for helping us promote the event um, a notice went out yesterday from the foundation or the uh, foundation for biomedical research uh, promoting the event and I thank them as well For those of you who don't know me, my name is Rick Bogle. I'm, I have one fan in the crowd. Eight years ago, I was sitting in front of the Oregon National Primate Research Center. And across the street from the Oregon Center, which is one of the eight National Primate Research Centers around the United States, one of the flagship primate research laboratories in the United States, founded and controlled by the National Institutes of Health. I had an idea because there was a vacant lot across the street from the Oregon Center. And I thought, at my time, I, I was wondering why in the world was the animal rights movement having such a difficult time gaining traction? Why wasn't media paying attention? And what happens is we have, it seems like we have these, these sudden events that happen. Uh, an organization will have a campaign. The campaign will raise some interest. People will hear about it, and then it dies down and it goes away. So we have to find some way to keep the debate alive, to keep something permanently in front of the public so that they can understand what's going on all of the time. If we forget, as everybody does, then we have to start all over again when something new comes about. So we've been scratching our heads and wondering, what can we do to keep people talking about the issue all of the time? I think that it's going to rain. I was going to um, give a little tour. I'm going to skip the tour, but what, let me tell you where we're at for those of you who don't know. Um, on each side of me, not the building that's behind me, this is private property we're on here, but the building to my right is the Harlow Primate Psychology Lab, and the building to my left and behind me is the Wisconsin National Primate Research Center. The, in the Harlow Lab, there's about 500 monkeys, and in the Wisconsin Center, there's about 1,500 more. So all around us right now, there's about 2,000 monkeys in cages. Many of the monkeys in this facility, the Wisconsin Center and in Harlow, some of them are pair housed, but there's also a number of monkeys that are locked alone in cages. We know that many of the monkeys in the cages around here have permanent fixtures on the tops of their skulls with electrodes into their brains. They're periodically taken, they're strapped into a chair, they're asked to do perform certain experiments so that people can study what's going on in their brains while they're doing those things. We know from documents that we've received recently from the facility that some of the monkeys that have this done, the people that screw these things on tops of their heads, sometimes sort of goof up. Recently was actually not so long ago, but they, some of the monkeys were dying and they couldn't figure out why, so they did some, some, ex, some x-rays on them, and they had, they had brain abscesses where the, they had chosen the wrong screw, the screw had punctured the skull and gone through into the dura and caused some brain abscesses. But it's just everyday stuff. The monkeys, monkeys typically will live 20, 30 years. Some of these animals will live in a, con, in a stainless steel box for their entire life. We know that many of the monkeys that are going that are in the nation's laboratories are become so chronically stressed that they resort to biting themselves, chewing themselves, doing all of these sorts of things. And the primate centers, the labs, the monkey labs around the country, they struggle with this all of the time, trying to find some way in or the other to alleviate this this suffering, the boredom that causes these sorts of these sorts of behaviors. But this kind of stuff, we, if we talk about it today, a week from now we forget. A week later we forget again until something comes about that gets it back into the news. So we have to find a way to keep it in the news all of the time. There has to be something that we can do. It's going to rain. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to right now, I'm going to uh, talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to, this building right here is going to do something for us. It's going to keep the issue in the public eye 365 days a year. Unlike campaigns that have gone around, that have taken place in the movement, we're not starting a campaign. We're not starting a campaign that has a beginning and an ending. What we're doing today is we're starting, we're, we're 
announcing the beginning of a facility that's going to be open to the public, that's going to put on display everything that's going on in primate labs around the United States, and it's going to be there all the time. As information comes out about what's going on in the labs, we'll put it on display. As we'll look at the history of what's gone on, we'll take Harlow himself and we'll put his history on display. It's, we'll be holding conferences, we'll be periodically changing the exhibits, we'll be doing everything that we can to keep attention on the issue. This is not a campaign. It doesn't have a beginning until it has a beginning. That's today. It doesn't have an end until we take all of these buildings around us and we turn them all into some sort of a museum for what used to be. So, now, now, we'll see how much... I'm a little worried about this with the lightning and thunder. I'm getting ready to get on a metal ladder and we'll see what happens. So talk amongst yourselves. I'll just keep talking while somebody runs to my truck and gets out. Our question is, that, uh, let me tell you that after this, I hope there's, there's maps here. That we're going to have a, uh, a presentation, some more information, some literature for you in the, in, uh, at the Alliance for Office, the Alliance for Animals office at 122 State, 122 State on the fourth floor. So I invite you to come over after this. There's refreshments. There's um, there's a PowerPoint presentation and some more in-depth sorts of reasons and ideas behind this and certainly specific things that you can do to help. Our hope is, is that Madison, the people of Madison, will see this as a way to, to break out of the mold of having to go to a protest and make a little bit of information and then have to come back. That's the wrong bit, Zach. It needs to be a uh, Philip government. So, what we think is, is that this is, one of the things we've said in the in the in all of the notices that we've sent out is that this is something different. This hasn't been tried before. The, the closest that's been tried for this is the Holocaust Memorial. That's the closest thing that we can come as a parallel. The difference between the Holocaust Memorial and this, though, is that the memorial is about something that happened in the past. This is about something that's happening right now. And that's what makes this different. This says... It's going to stop, and we're going to make a statement about it, and we're going to keep talking to the public, and we're going to make it as big and as obvious and as, as visual as we possibly can. Did we find something? Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> I have somebody who was going to help me.
only one of the eight regional or national primate research centers that you can walk up to as a member of the public and touch. The, the, I've been to the others. I've been to the others many times. Every one of them is hidden behind either a chain link fence and you can see it off in the distance or you can't see it at all from the road. This is the only one that you can actually walk up to and touch the building. It's the only one that you can walk into and look in the windows. This is the only one that when people come to visit that they'll be able to walk up and down the and actually see these things, see the people working in them, and get an idea for what's going on. This is the only one that you walk up to the vents and smell the stench coming out of the building from the animals being so kept so closely for so long. This is what we're going to do. So there's a number of speakers. I want to get them in before it rains and electrocutes us all. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it on to Lori Nitzel, the director of the Alliance for Animals. ceremonies or sign unveiling ceremonies uh, in my district and it's never 
very controversial. It's usually a new building that's opening. Um, but rarely does just the mere presence of a building contribute so significantly to a civic debate. And, and that's really what I wanted to say today. I'll be exceedingly brief because of the impending weather. But welcome to the neighborhood. Um, this is obviously uh, a neighborhood, a lot of different uses. We've got residents here um, that want to be here. We've got residents here that maybe didn't choose to be here, some that are in cages. And the best way for us to come to terms as a community with what we have in our community is to have an open dialogue about it. And, uh, you know, I, I tend to honestly go both ways on the political question of animal research. Um, there are, I'm certainly not a card carrying member yet of the Alliance for Animals, though I've been a vegetarian for seven years. Um, but I do know that this is an important question of our time. And that the debate that will stem from the mere presence of this building and the activities that will go on within it is vital uh, to helping us come to terms with this question and maybe reach some sort of conclusion um, that is healthy for humans and animals alike and will increase uh, the amount of humanity in this um, part of town. So I'm exceedingly proud that this building's opening up in my district. I think it's a great counterbalance. Um, I love the idea of having a geographic uh, representation of opposition right next to the building that is so opposed. And I'm, I'm just thrilled about this. I'm, of course, eager to speak. I speak at a lot of ribbon cuttings. Um, but this one I know is going to last uh, through the ages and probably get me more flack from the university than anything else I've ever done. But um, this is a, a great day for debate in Madison, um, and I'm just really happy to be here. And so I think it's my pleasure now to introduce uh, County Supervisor Al Matano. Thanks, Rick, for uh, making this happen. This is a great facility. I had to laugh when I was thinking of what Austin was saying about ribbon cuttings. I, my big political introduction in Madison when I moved here 13 years ago was fighting against Monona Terrace, which was constructed in Lakeshore Park and creates a nice play place for uh, the wealthy. And here, this is a much more attractive building in my mind. <laughs> so, uh, I, I represent, my name is Al Matano, I represent the 11th district on the near west side. Um, this is not in my district, but when I was talking to Laurie about the possibility of speaking, it occurred to me that uh, part of my district is the village of Sherwood Hills, and there in the village, the uh, university was presenting their plans for the Interdisciplinary Research Center, and it all sounded like science and very good uh, cutting edge thinking and putting all the um, lab researchers near the doctors and the technicians and there will be 250 marmosets will experiment on it. So, oh by the way, so people in the room took some exception to that but of course as the UW does they swept that under the rug. So I think it's great to put faces on the uh, faces of the animals that are subjects to the research. I think part of why people are um, Part of why animal research goes on as much as it is is because uh, it goes on behind closed doors. So this facility will help in a great way to educate the public. And uh, another fan. Um, it'll shine a light on the research. And somehow even the animal research that goes on behind closed doors to our left and to our right will no longer be going on behind closed doors because of what's going on here. And so I'm very grateful to have been invited here. I'm very proud to be part of this event, and I, I really praise Rick Vogel for making this happen. It's a lifetime dream for him, and I know for so many of you to uh, have a permanent facility, uh, to have permanent displays on what animal research is all about. So when people are trying to make up their minds about animal research, they can see the actual faces, the actual animals, even if not the animals to our left or to our right, as they are suffering. But um, depictions of them put together by um, the Alliance for Animals and Rick Vogel and other things. Hi there, my name is uh, Zach Larson. Uh, along with Rick Vogel and Jeremy Beckham, we were uh, vigiling over here one year ago um, when we got the idea uh, to use, utilize this building and this most uh, effective and um, 
most effective and awe-inspiring way. Um, so thanks all very much for coming for the unveiling of this project, and thanks for Jeremy and Rick moving here from California and Oregon, respectively, to make this dream come true. This is, a, this is a monumental day in the movement to end experimentation on our fellow primates, invasive and unnecessary experiments that are far too often cruel and inhumane. Here in Madison, we have been fighting to close the centers behind us for many years, and despite our noble efforts, these facilities have only expanded and the federal tax dollars that fund them only increase. However, the major step being taken today, with the major step being taken today, we have hope that such disturbing trends will change. I have lived in Madison and attended the UW for, uh, for undergraduate and graduate studies since 97. After meeting Rick in 98, I joined the movement to close these centers which subject countless monkeys to a life of pain and suffering in the name of mad science. We have successfully raised the public conscience of Madison on this issue through many demonstrations, public educational events, press articles, and successful campaigns, such as the sending of 55 stumptail monkeys Thank from the you. Violet Zoo to a wildlife sanctuary in 1998, after we exposed the primate centers illegal invasive research being conducted on them. Thanks to groups like the Alliance for Animals, Medicine Coalition for Animal Rights, the Primate Freedom Project, we have kept pressure on these centers and let them know that this community does not condone the pain and torture they subject our primate brothers and sisters to daily. The U.S. government attempted to appease the growing call for ending primate experimentation by expanding the Animal Welfare Act in 1985 to require a physical environment adequate to promote the psychological well-being of primates, in quotations. However, our beloved friends on the other sides of these brick walls continue to live in steel cages in an environment as unnatural and oppressive as an Alcatraz prison cell. Even Wisconsin's own primate researcher, Victor Reinhardt, pointed out recently that living in these cramped, cold cages, quote, induces anxiety and fear, manifesting themselves in depression or hyperaggression, end quote. Despite sharing 93% of human DNA, and according to Reinhardt, quote, having intense biological needs for social contact and social, uh, for social contact and social interaction, and like all other primates, being intelligent and sensitive animals, the hundreds of rhesus macaques in prison behind us are subjected to hideous mental and physical suffering throughout their lives. It is clear that the only way these researchers can adhere to the 1985 amendment to the Animal Welfare Act is to transfer all primates in their care to a sanctuary immediately. Yeah! Yes. In terms of physical torment, Wisconsin Primate Center's own website admits that 7% of all experiments conducted here involve subjecting our primate friends to intense pain without using anesthesia, so as not to quote-unquote compromise the scientific quality of the data. As for mental suffering, the Wisconsin Center is notorious for its cruel experiments. Harry Harlow, whom the building next to us was named after, was an emotionally disturbed scientist who seemed to get pleasure out of warping the minds of baby monkeys by giving them an electric shock when they tried to cuddle up to their mother figure, or forcing them to live in black isolation to see how mentally unstable they might become later in life. Ned Kalin carries on these traditions today at the Wisconsin Primate Center by testing the effects of perpetual fear on these helpless creatures using the most cruel techniques imaginable. I just returned a few weeks ago after nine months in Nepal and India, where rhesus macaques live happily in freedom. Many of the rhesus here at the Wisconsin Primate Center have relatives in India who were captured from the wild and brought to these horrendous facilities prior to the 1978 ban India imposed on exporting them after it learned of the ill treatment they were receiving at laboratories across the United States. I visited many temples in India where resident monkeys are as respected as the holy men that live there. Even though many people in rural India live in mud and stick huts and have never seen a television, their views toward animals are far more civilized than the barbarism going on here. Albert Einstein once said, compassion is the highest form of intelligence. Those who hold non-human primates captive against their will and ensure them a miserable life by subjecting them to invasive experiments on the grounds that monkeys are less intelligent than human primates are clearly indicating their own dullness based on the deluded notion of anthropocentrism. It took a long time in this country for women's rights and the civil rights of African Americans to be recognized, and the rights of primates will also not come overnight. But with our determined efforts, which are sure to be invigorated today, all our primate brothers and sisters will one day be able to enjoy the rights and dignified lives they deserve. Alliance for Animals office since it's starting to rain so bad. Oh, 
before um, we go, um, I, we really would like to take a photo of everyone standing in front of the um, in front of the future home of the National Prairie Resource Exhibition Hall. So, um, everyone, please just collect up front and face that way, and we'll take some photos. Thank you. Yeah, I gotta get them. I gotta get them. Just wait till the boy comes back. 